Welcome to Film My Run, my name's Stephen Cousins. Today we're going to do something a little bit different, something I very rarely, if ever, do, and that's analyse the data in some of my runs. Uh, particularly what we're going to do is look at the difference between running on a treadmill and running outdoors. Uh, I've got four marathons to look at. Two of them will run on a treadmill indoors, two of them will run outdoors. Uh, a lot of people say that running on a treadmill is more difficult. Uh, some people say it's easier, but most people say it's more difficult to run indoors on a treadmill. There are, are a variety of reasons for that. One of them could be the indoor temperature, lack of airflow, uh, makes your heart rate higher, for example, perhaps. Um, or a poor quality treadmill uh, with a poor motor, which makes you work harder or seemingly harder. Your, your perceived exertion is harder on the treadmill. Uh, to get the same speed or to cover the same amount of different distance in the same time. Uh, so lots of reasons why um, people think running on a treadmill is harder. Uh, what I feel is that they should be the same. So your treadmill running indoors needs to match your running outdoors in terms of the uh, effort that you make over the same distance for the same time. So if you run 10k in one hour outdoors, then you should do 10k in one hour indoors for the same level of effort. So your heart rate or your power numbers or your perceived exertion should feel the same indoors and outdoors. I know that's not the case for a lot of people, but it should, it should be. Uh, so I'm going to have a look at three, four marathons now. So let's start with a marathon from uh, March 2019. So over a year ago, year and a half or so ago. Uh, this was a, a treadmill marathon, the Watopia Run Festival on Zwift. Uh, and I did it in a time of 3 hours 29 minutes for 42.2 kilometres. Um, now, Training Peaks, which is what I'm using here, gives you what's called a TSS score. That's a training stress score. It's basically how much stress your body was under or how hard you were having to work to achieve that result. Uh, and also what Training Peaks does is it measures your fitness based on a number of different uh, measures uh, and an algorithm that, that judges how fit you are. So my fitness level at this time, March 2019, was 52. So just bear that number in mind, 52 and a TSS score for this run of 217. Let's just look at the heart rate and the power and the speed. So my speed for this run was 12.1 kilometers per hour. My average heart rate was 151 and my power average was 240. So that's for an indoor run on in March 2019. Now let's look at an outdoor run. One month later, I run the Paris Marathon. And I run the Paris Marathon in two hours, 33 minutes, but I've actually covered a little bit more ground, almost a kilometre more in terms of distance covered. Uh, so you can argue that the distance and time for these is the same. One kilometre in about four, four and a half minutes, uh, 3.29 and 3.33 for slightly more distance. So we can argue they're the same. I'm about the same level of fitness, maybe not quite as fit, 48 as opposed to 52. Not a, not a big difference really, to be honest. And I've had to work a little bit harder. So maybe because I'm not quite as fit, I've had to work a little bit harder in Paris, according to the TSS score. My body was under a bit more stress. However, if we look at heart rate, my heart rate is actually, the average heart rate is lower um, so 151 average heart rate for the indoor run and uh, 147 average heart rate for the outdoor run. But then if we look at power, average power is 239 as opposed to average power in here, 240. Hardly any difference at all, really. So perhaps I was working a little bit harder indoors and maybe that was to do with warmth, the heat of the indoor environment, who knows, um, but maybe uh, maybe there's some other factor that we don't know about. Uh, there are a lot of parameters that affect uh, why your heart rate might be high, uh, but really there's, I mean, it's four beats per minute difference. It is a little bit higher, 
but not massively higher, is it? It's not huge. Uh, the, the maximum heart rate goes higher, uh, certainly sprinting at the end here to try and get in probably in under three hours 30, maybe I pushed my max heart rate there. Uh, so those are those two runs. Then we come to this year. Now this year I'm a bit fitter. Uh, so we look at uh, June this year for an indoor run. Now I'm much fitter than I was last year. Look, 48 fitness, 81 fitness. But I'm a bit more tired, so fatigue is 61 for the Paris Marathon, but fatigue is a bit greater. So I'm a bit more tired going into this run, but I am also fitter going into this run. Uh, now, if we look at heart rate, 146 heart rate. So actually, the same. The same heart rate for the same run in all three, pretty much the same average heart rate. Unfortunately, there are no power numbers for this run. I didn't obviously wear my stride foot pod uh, for this run, so we're going to have to work just off power. Speed, average speed for this is 11.6, so slower than these two runs, the Paris run and last year's treadmill marathon. Uh, but I did achieve a slower time. Uh, so, and I've worked slightly harder as well, 239 as opposed to 220 and 217 TSS score. Uh, but it is based off heart rate, so that can sometimes affect things, can be slightly different. So if I am fitter than I was in the previous two marathons and my heart rate is on average about the same, why is it that I wasn't able to achieve uh, the 230 marathon time. Well, I think it's down to heat. We're running in June indoors in this uh, shed here, which is affected by the heat. It's very hot in here. There are some big windows, even though I had the doors wide open. And you can see here, I was maintaining a high um, level of uh, pace um, all the way. I was managing to keep uh, about 12 kilometers per hour all the way uh, until about 35 kilometers in when I cracked, I broke and my, my pace basically plummets and my heart rate comes down with that as well. So I, I basically give up here and the last seven kilometers is dead slow, um, just grinding it home. So if the heat hadn't got to me, perhaps I would have managed to maintain uh, that all the way to the end. And perhaps if it had been outdoors, that would have been the case. Who knows? Uh, so let's go on to uh, the marathon that I did 48 hours ago, uh, the virtual London marathon. Uh, my fitness is a lot greater, 103, because I've been putting a lot of miles in over the last few weeks. You can see that my effort level 241 um, is higher than last year's uh, marathons, 220 and uh, 217 in terms of power. Uh, and you can see my average power is higher, 255 average power compared to 240, uh, 240 and 239 on last year's indoor and outdoor marathons. Um, so what can we say about this? Well, I am fitter. I'm able to run faster for the same heart rate, 148 heart rate here, uh, 146, 147 and 151 slightly higher there. Uh, but for pretty much the same heart rate, I'm actually able to run quicker because I am fitter over the same distance. Uh, power numbers are greater, I'm stronger um, and able to do that outdoor marathon in a quicker time. Just for fun, I've changed the TSS score. Instead of reading from power, I've changed it to heart rate. Uh, so this is the virtual London marathon from 48 hours ago. TSS score of 236 for a 324 marathon. Indoors, a TSS score of 239 for June's Watopia Run Festival in 337. 
So um, slightly harder work to get the London Marathon done than that one, but I did do it slower and I wasn't as fit. And 239 for the Paris Marathon. So again, we're pretty much 236, 239, 239 and 264. So my fitness level of 51 in March 2019 has made me work a lot harder to get a sub 330 marathon on the treadmill uh, than it does for me to get a pretty much comparable, because remember I've gone a bit further in terms of distance. Uh, I didn't have to work as hard to get the same marathon result outdoors uh, for this about the same fitness. And then we jump to the next indoor marathon. Uh, I've had to work exactly the same. The same level of effort has gone in to this marathon as to the previous marathon, the Paris marathon. Uh, but I've got a slower time. Uh, and we've attributed that to the heat of the day in June. Uh, so I've worked just as hard, uh, same heart rate, uh, but I've just collapsed with the heat at the end of the run. And that's why we've got a much slower time or seven, eight minutes difference in time because of that last bit of work there, which wasn't quite as good. So I think what I'm beginning to conclude uh, from looking at this data is that perhaps it is a bit harder on the treadmill than it is outdoors. Uh, certainly for this, these marathon examples, um, it looks like I'm the same level of fitness last year, pretty much for indoors and outdoors. Um, and the only thing that's making it different because the times are the, the same for the distances. So 3.33 for 43 kilometers or 3.29 for 42 kilometers. So um, it's the same time essentially. Um, and the only difference being that uh, we seem to have worked a lot harder, 264, an average heart rate, 151, with a max heart rate of 176. I seem to have worked a lot harder for that time indoors uh, than I have for this time outdoors uh, over the same, you know, it's the same distance, the same time. And if we go to the two more recent marathons, it seems like I've worked harder here um, for a slower time than my marathon a couple of days ago. Only slightly harder, 236 HRTSS for a time of 324. Um, but I have worked a little bit harder and got 13 minutes slower time. You can see my speed is slower, although my heart rate is similar. Um, and that's because we're indoors and I haven't been able to cope with the heat indoors. And maybe if I'd been outdoors, that wouldn't have happened. This slowdown in the last 7K wouldn't have happened. So again, we, we're possibly arguing that it is a little bit more difficult to run a marathon on a treadmill indoors than it is to run one outdoors. Also, I think it's just worth noting uh, that I run on the treadmill at 0%. So I'm not, a lot of people will add 1% incline because they feel it makes it uh, more realistic uh, to outdoor running uh, but on the evidence that we've got here that perhaps actually treadmill running is more difficult I'm running at zero percent so I don't want to make it even more difficult for myself uh, by raising the incline by one percent it is just as hard if not harder uh, to run on a treadmill indoors than it is to run outdoors let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, do you agree with me? Do you think that um, I've made any errors here in my assessment of uh, the uh, power or heart rate uh, measures? Uh, so, so that's it, guys. Uh, thanks very much for watching. I hope this hasn't been too tedious for you to get through. Uh, there'll be another Film My Run uh, epic marathon coming soon. Uh, I'm currently editing the Buell Water Marathon, so that should be out soon. Uh, take care. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you again. Take care. Bye-bye.